<laughs> okay, so open voicings, spread voicings and open voicings. So for anyone who doesn't know what Julia is talking about, um, what we teach in the main curriculum is something called closed voicings. And the reason why we teach closed voicings is because they're going to be your reference point. So um, if I play like all the inversions in C, uh, I'm going to play three note triads. You're going to learn. different ways to play a C major triad and so forth. Now um, close voicings are triads that are on adjacent strings so the notes are all within an octave and they're all very close together whereas spread voicings or open voicings um, that's where you take one of the notes an octave higher and the sound is more open and, and really beautiful so that would be these ones so this would instead of like C E G you're doing C G E so you're taking this E up an octave. And then you can do inversions of this. So in, um, the way that I like to think about inversions, the, like similar to how I teach in the uh, curriculum, is I like to think of like, imagine, uh, so I'm playing on the fifth string, fourth string, and third string. So imagining that I'm trying to reach the next chord tone on each string. So my root goes to my third here. My next chord tone from my fifth is going to be my root. And my next chord tone from my third is going to be my fifth. So I would jump from this chord up to this chord. And then, um, yeah, and then the last voicing, I'd want to get my fifth, third, and root. So does that make sense so far, Julia? So yeah, do you always start them from the fifth string? Oh, no. So that's, you can, you can, um, String sets work in such a way that <laughs> um, you you can take any combination of notes and put them into various string sets. So this would be the fifth string. I could also do a C from the sixth string and find all the inversions from there. And I can and then so there's three string sets I can work with here because it's a three string or sorry it's a four string span. So I can only do this, this, and this. Right? And then I could find the inversions on the um, last string set as well. Right? But, so, and the idea is that you have, if you start on the E string, you have one note on the E string, one note on the A string, and then skip one and then have the next one? That's a way to think about it. That's definitely like the guitar brain way to think about it. And um, which, so that's going to work. And, but let me give you the more like theoretical, technical way like how it's derived you want to make sure you understand like uh you have the root position tried you recognize that one right yes so what you're doing what you're actually doing with the notes is you're taking the middle note in this case the e and you're moving it up an octave so i could also play it like this okay right? so the middle note is being moved up an octave on the guitar it's really convenient to do this same same exact notes same order so this is the one we tend to use the most this is like kind of like our bar chord right yeah um, so yeah so that's a good way to think about it but also just knowing what you're doing you're doing a root fifth and third as the order of the notes and then you're taking um this sort of pattern and then moving it through the inversion 